What is up guys? We are back with some more of the Omaholic series here on GG Poker. On the tournament grind as of late. Been putting in some studying the last week or so after uh, <clears throat> mega punting in the <laughs> in the 250 final table bubble uh, with top set which uh, was played pretty poorly I think the more and more I uh, study this stuff so we shall see um, but yeah we're gonna be keeping it um, at two tables for now, we'll be adding in some more tournaments as we go. Plenty on the agenda today and tomorrow. We'll probably play some of the um, stage one to the uh, to the bounty millions as well, given that that final stage is tomorrow. So we shall see. So we start off here with the um, the daily monster stacks. Um, had a couple of um, couple of good pots in the 150 so far, so we're doing pretty well there. There will be a ton more entrance um, over the next couple of hours, so hopefully we have a long stream in that. Uh, we basically uh, we bubbled <laughs> this tournament yesterday as well, which was um, again you could exploitatively let it go, but it was pretty sick cooler when you know one of the other deeper stacks. I was probably like sixth or seventh or something, and he was like fifth, and um, <laughs> like I I ripped the second nut boat like queens full of kings um and he rivered kings full <laughs> um yeah so it was uh kind of gross when he just like open ships the river like over bets pot by like i think it was like two and a half x pot um and i mean it's pretty tough to get that down even with uh even with icm uh, on the left here, took a stab on the flop, um, picked up a little bit of equity, and still just going to check and then likely bluff hot rivers. Not that one, though. Um, on the left, um, decent overcards, not so much required for protection against the big blind range. I think it's a good hand to check back. Good card for our range on the turn. Uh, on the left with no real blockers too. This kind of value here just gonna fold. Um, really dry board. Uh, we don't we don't really get anything um, better to fold here. So I think just checking back is fine. Great river. And with ten and a seven, do we get much value? I don't ever think we get check raised, but. Just not really sure what we get value from here. Obviously another 10x. Maybe he calls with nines. Maybe. So full pot open sizing here in these um in these bigger stack tournaments, usually over 100 BB, or when effective is kind of 100 BB plus, I will use pot opens. And then, you know, once we get below that, start um, start using the smaller sizings. But definitely want to be playing aggressive in these deep 
uh, tournaments early on. Just given that um, players don't really love uh, getting into really large pots with marginal hands. And, um, you know, especially tournament players aren't as used to playing uh, deep. So probably have some edge there. And, you know, we can apply a lot of pressure and build up a little bit of a, an aggressive um, image, which we can then use when we actually need to be, like, stealing blinds later on. Uh, people aren't going to want to play with us um, in, in these kinds of pots. Uh, on the kind of double pad, uh, on the pad board here, I'm actually just going to check back. And, you know, given that he has a lot of draws out of the big blind, he won't fold. And I'm actually going to flat these aces. Uh, in position. And not a great turn uh, on the right. Don't think that we can fall though with gut shot um, and a heart blocker that we can potentially use on rivers. It's a small sizing too. Um, and then checking back flop on the left. Don't want to get raised. Um, Obviously, we block a lot of the raises, but any of his value raises, um, we can potentially get to bluff on lower streets with the Ace of Clubs. Um, I'm just going to go for a small bet here. Apply some pressure, keep my range uncapped with the Ace of Clubs, and on this river... Spending a large sizing. And <laughs> my tag on this particular player is absolute calling station. So I don't think we're going to go for the, uh, for the uh, over bet here on the river. And he's never folding that hand. Tito, what is up, my friend? How have you been? Yesterday you played MTT but didn't stream. Why? Um, <laughs> I mean, I uh, I don't always stream. It's kind of tiring, you know. Sometimes, especially uh, especially in like like lower action kind of games as well, because you know you often feel like you have to uh, chat and talk through all the different spots, and sometimes it's just pretty exhausting. Um, I think just flying this hand. Maybe this is a three bet. Nine nine eight seven. Not sure. Pretty bad flop either way. Um, no real hope on the left. Um, so going to barrel here, we can get better hands to fold. We need protection if we are ahead. An easy fold to check raise. Hmm. Given that we do turn some equity, even with the three hearts. Um, I don't think a queen is folding. Uh, to this sizing, I don't think we're folding. Back to our hearts and over pair. I'm just going to check back. We do river the boat. So sucking out on queen x now. Which will be a good portion of his range. He shouldn't have too many bets here. It's kind of scary if he does. Um... Given that we would absolutely play aces this way. So it's kind of weird. Um, and on the right now, we kind of lose to all of his bluffs. That's uh, so just going to be check folding. Um, the thing is, is what bluffs does he have when we have three hearts? That's what you have to think about is if you can't find bluffs in this spot, like he probably doesn't have them. Um, so he may have like some some weak kings that he didn't want to three bet. And obviously we're deep too, so he'll have a ton more kings in his range. And he doesn't three bet. Yeah. 
yeah and i wasn't uh tito i wasn't really planning on like streaming that much just like playing that much i really only was playing these two monster stack tournaments and then um that was kind of going to be it so today though i'm probably going to like add some more tournaments as they come up and see how we go Let's see what we got coming up next We do have the $54 bounty main. Um, I guess in a couple of hours we have the stage one bounty millions. So we'll play some of those. So hopefully a long stream, but That's uh, deep at the ante, definitely going to defend on the left, even against pot size open. Flopping middle set, no diamond blocker. Pretty standard check call. Half pot size bet, somewhat large, but we are, well, I guess effective, not that deep. Guy seems reasonably tight here, so the problem with calling against like this type of player, or actually the pool in general, is that um, he's not going to give up any non-pairing river. So basically, we have to call sixteen bigs and then uh, like fifty bigs. Um, in order to see a showdown, we just very rarely um, get that free showdown. Um, on the pairing ace turn, <laughs> without a spade, um, I mean, he snap called. This guy is very wide. I don't mind small bet here. He's going to fold all of his draws. Or most of them anyway. Yeah, get a snap fold. And then probably jam with an ace. So I think there's no real reason to bet big there. Pretty much with whatever you have. Alright, I guess we will be back in five.
All right, we are back. We are back. Do you plan on any holidays outside of the UK? Um, I'll be going to Vegas in like a little under two months. Uh, probably go there play a couple of the uh, the little events that are close together. So go up like ten days or something. So it's probably it. Hmm. Might be in, might be in the U.S. A little bit before that as well. We'll see. Got some friends' weddings there, so might head there for a little trip as well. But we'll see. We'll see. Top Gunner, welcome to the chat and welcome to PLO, my friend. Uh, yeah, 10, 10 buy-in session is rough. Uh, definitely not unheard of. But you wanna go back through the session and uh, man, I'm tempted to fold this. We just get ourselves in so many tricky spots. Unless we just flop the rainbow wrap. <sighs> good, good choice, good choice. Um, yeah, you want to go back through your session when that happens, um, because usually when you have 10 buy-ins, um, you know, a portion of that is... Uh, getting yourself into spots that you shouldn't have been in after after like the first five buy-ins the second five buy-ins are not usually all variants so you want to go back through your session you want to review see where you played spots well and you got punished by variants see some spots that you played poorly but got lucky um because you're probably overlooking those spots as well um like when you made a bad play or bad call and like rivet a nice hand, um, you know, and then like shoved and, you know, either your opponent called or, or you're able to get your opponent to fold. Like those spots you usually kind of overlook once you have a session like that. Um, so yeah, go back, review the hands, take a day or two, don't play, just, uh, just grind and study. I mean, I mean, I do want to be playing against this guy. It's not the best hand. It's a pretty good flop, though. And against this guy, I mean, we have nothing really to protect against. And he seems quite aggressive. We can be calling with overpairs and whatnot. It's a pretty good turn. Do we get cooled here again in the $30? have monster stack mm. basically since we have the 10 as well and he's likely bang over pairs or random cards maybe he picked up some equity um i'm actually gonna check back here could argue to bet given that we unblock hearts but he's now gonna call a pot size jam for sure um I mean, this is ridiculous, so it's... And a lot deeper here as well. So a lot of his good flush draws about the flop because they have a lot of backup in there. I don't think he really checks back two pair that often, even though he should. 
Uh, we have some good blockers and a great hand to double if we get called and it's not a diamond. I think these are like the worst over pair, uh, Broadway pairs. The Solver doesn't really like folding Broadway pairs when there's like no rack in these spots. Um, in position this deep. I think we do want a three bet. We can apply a ton of pressure and I feel like the three bet ranges are pretty tight in these games and especially deep out position this guy's got to be very careful. Hmm, with the shorty behind, I think I'm just going to fold even against the very small raise. We kind of switch up to the smaller sizing now as average stacks start to drop below <clears throat> 100. Mm. You could argue that given that the check raising ranges are too value heavy, we could bet full descent um, for some protection, but there are really not that many fun turns. SPR 3, I mean, we could rip this. We do unblock all the draws, our position. And we do take it down, which I think is one of the better outcomes, given the strength of our hand and the runouts. Um, but uh, no straight blocker, no hearts. I mean, no reason to, no reason to slow play. This guy's playing seventy-eight percent VPIP. Um, I don't really want to just like bomb pot here. I mean, you probably could. I think seventy-five works better. And then just. 
calling here pretty deep with a7. Pretty nice turn. Mm. So this is like not a good card for our uh, check calling range. I mean, it's not terrible because it's the bottom pairing card. Um, but I don't mind checking back here just because, you know, it's kind of hard to get value and we just often run into like ace, ace, jack, jack when we start piling a bunch of money in. Mm -hmm. Pretty gross if we get check raised down the river. <laughs> And just with like no real backup, damn it, dude. See, I think we have to call now, though. I mean, obviously he's wrapping asses, which we block hard. Um, yeah, makes sense. Against other players, you could potentially fold that, but. Uh, I don't think against uh, this guy who looks a little bit more uh, kind of like Reggie. I think our line was nice there in terms of inducing the bluff. Here we have no fold equity, so I don't mind just actually calling this and not three bang. Like we just want to think about like certain runouts and like what the SPR is going to be. It's still going to be reasonably high when we get to the flop and it's likely going to be three wear. We end up with boards like this and... Um, we're just in a lot of trouble. Mm. Even though I think most flush draws bet flop, I'm just not. Uh, it's not going to be my main strategy is to try and uh, <clears throat> try and bluff these types of players with uh, with you know no blockers and just kind of taking super exploitative lines. Hey Rob, uh, so any advice for handling downswings? Um, yeah, I mean, well, uh, and then followed it up with seen a few places say the answer is counterintuitively more volume in order to work your way out of it. Um, I'll, you know, I'll personally tell you what I do, um, when I'm having a downswing, um, I just go back one. The first thing I do for like clarity's sake of like how bad was I actually running versus how much did I like play poorly is as I've said before plenty of times like go back review each individual hand um you know and see whether you should have been in those spots in the first place whether you were punting um that kind of stuff um but then also I usually just take like a few days off and just really really study hard and use it as a motivational tool and just be like okay this is variance I'm not as good as what I thought I was. This is the other end of the, the other side of the coin, right? That, you know, uh, you know, maybe I've been running well, maybe I'm not um, actually playing as well as I thought. I use it as a good excuse to motivate myself to, you know, get back to grinding, studying for, you know, like two or three days straight. That lets me hit the table with, you know, kind of renewed confidence. Um, and often that will in itself, it'll correct. Let's say that, you know, in any sort of like bad, in any sort of bad run, you know, it's like 70% variance and then like 30% tilt, right? At least you're removing most of that tilt portion. Um, and like, not necessarily tilt, but like the bad play portion. Um, once you build that confidence back up. So that's usually what I do. Um, you know, there's a bunch of different approaches to it. I would say play less just because Mm. until you kind of get back into that right mindset because you just end up chasing too much and it's great to say like hey i'm just gonna play through this i know it's variance let's not chase but i can tell you personally and from what i've seen as well it, it doesn't uh it doesn't often work that way
But one thing that I suggest to everyone is um, if you haven't already, go buy both books from Jared Tendler, The Mental Game of Poker, and read those. Don't just read them, use them as, uh, um, you know, like a daily, a daily kind of workbook that, you know, you would with kind of anything as a reference, you know, oh man, like I had a, I had difficulty with this. I'm going to section four, I'm going to review it. Okay, what are the, <clears throat> what are the exercises I should be doing? You know, all that kind of stuff. Um, because a ton of that, and it won't specifically be bad, um, specifically um, directed towards um, downswings, but the whole combination of it will allow you to be better mentally prepared for each session. Um, and it one make down swings less unlikely, uh, less likely, and it will also um, reduce kind of the emotional variance that you have within down swings. And you know, realizing that they're just, um, you know, something that is eventually going to happen, and you know, reframing your kind of outlook win rate over the long term uh, can definitely help those sort of down swing moments. So. I can't recommend those books enough. I've kind of worked with him um, as a person and he's, you know, very, very smart when it comes to this stuff. I mean, I think <clears throat> most people know that he is, you know, the best in, in, the, in, the, in the poker world and works with some of the top guys. So uh, definitely check out those books. And I'll actually put it in the chat. So if you're not already, and when I say studying, I mean, I probably split my technical and mental studying like 70, 30. And, you know, so when I take those three days off after, you know, a 10 buy-in, you know, session loss, right? I'm gonna sit down and maybe the first thing I'll do because it's usually, um, to me anyway, kind of that the harder piece to force myself to do piece that I don't necessarily want to do rather than, you know, jumping in the train or reviewing hands, which is pretty interesting. The first hour of my three hour study session, you know, I'll sit down, I will review and, you know, obviously you have to plan ahead for this, but, you know, I'll review my notes, my mental notes from the session, you know, what I did, how I felt in certain areas, what certain triggers were, what was going on when I was losing two buy-ins, when I was losing five buy-ins, losing 10 buy-ins. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of how I structure it. Um, and you know, whether that's looking at my A to C game analysis or it's working on, you know, my correcting logic statements and drilling those and making sure that those are popping up into my head, whether it's, you know, noticing triggers, that kind of stuff. So that's like an hour of work, which nobody wants to do. Um, it's not the sexy part of poker, but if you want to do this long term it is absolutely essential um is folding king eight seven four double suited against 20 bb a thing um so like against obviously once you get down to like 20 bb it becomes much more important to have like i card um hands versus um you know versus these kind of playable hands right like obviously i'm never folding that hand 100 bb deep right um now probably still not fold against 20 bb um because you just often enough flop enough equity to stack off because you know you're gonna get to um what was it 20 bb three bit pot you're gonna get to an spr of like you know just over 0.5 so you'll need 25 percent equity to stack off and so you're basically stacking off on any flop um the thing is you know what is your actual equity um 
with a king. Um, it's not great. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe against his range, it's like 35%, 40%. Can be 30 if your flush draws are covered, right? So in a tournament for whatever it was at the time, like a quarter of my stack, do I want to take a spot where, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm behind almost for sure, obviously, right? And against such tight three bang ranges at 20 bit blind stacks. I don't know if I really want to take that spot. I mean, you could look it up in a solver um, and it's probably a call. Like I can't imagine that there's many folds, but if you change the, um, if you change the three bet range at 20 big blinds to like aces, king, king, and ace, king, king, pretty much like 90% of the time, um, that might, uh, you're gonna have a lot more, uh, a lot more raise folds. Um, just a pretty gross hand here on the left. Uh, I'm gonna check it back. We can obviously bluff non-diamond stranding turns. Um, decent turn card for my range. I'll check back a lot of 9x, but I expect to get led into a good amount here, and I don't think that I would call. Mm, we could bet now, given that we're basically dead against raising ranges and we need some protection. And obviously a pretty good card for our overpairs, like his AX hands aren't doing well. And then, yeah, can obviously just fold against this. Quite comfortably. Maybe we'll uh, we'll look that one up quickly in a solver uh, once we're on break. Um, ba ba ba. I don't think I have any leads on this board. Uh, all way. <laughs> kind of a weird so like if we call here um get to like an SPR of what like three on the turn oops really quick I meant to click the time uh bank to think it through we get to an SPR of um yeah like three on the turn if we just get one caller and <laughs> just ships it So, I mean, obviously, we're folding. Unfortunately. Turn the nuts. Probably lost on the river, though. We do want to block spades, though. He could have had, you know, combo draws there, but we're just... We're just crushed against that range. I mean, this guy's super tight, too. So, how are we doing? We are... Decent amount under average. Let's see what the rebuy is. Rebuy is at 50 bigs. I mean, we can play pretty aggressive, to be honest. With a 60 big blind stack, given that we can just rebuy. 
and then over here we're doing pretty well and the rebuy is at 75 bigs so not gonna be doing anything too crazy over here on the right though we might ship a couple of marginal spots So these are hands that I'm like starting to get a little more used to in tournament play, but maybe not against this big sizing, but I think against a smaller open raise, I don't think that we're really folding uh, Broadway pairs on the button. So I think if this was two and a half X, I think that we probably have to call. I could be wrong. It's a pretty good hand to limp actually, given that this guy's a bit shorter. And then limp call. Probably check call flop depending on sizing. I mean, it looks like we have blockers, but realistically, when you think about his raising range to ISO, it's not like he's gonna have like big wrap combo draws, right? Like. He's not going to have like, you know, like deuces. Like, so blocking the deuce is kind of irrelevant. Blocking the four is kind of irrelevant. So we just have to kind of play with some equity at this point. And pretty good turn. And just going to shove SPR2 here with the uh, bomb two. Um... Thing is, we do need protection against flush draws that he's going to check back at this point. He's likely going to have overpairs. Um, we don't actually really get to lead on this turn much. Um, but I think, exploitatively, I am going to lead out. And if we get raised... I would just be folding. Given that we're dead against value. So that's an interesting thing that I haven't really started exploring yet. Um, but definitely will, if I'm going to put in tournament volume on GG, is how having the all-in feature post-flop um, changes the overall structure of the game. And I'm not talking not just about ranges on the flop either, but there's going to be certain hands in certain SPRs, depending on, you know, single raise, three bet months, that actually play like very, very differently pre flop if there is the all in option. So that's going to take a good amount of compute power to figure out, I think. Um. If I had the nine here, probably could look to lead. Probably could still lead, to be honest. Block two straights now, some pairs and the flush draw. I mean, it's a great board for my range. Obviously, he'll have more noted flush draws. Could probably bet a little smaller in that regard, but we do take it down.
And realistically, I should probably raise every button. If this guy, I mean, it's not a huge hand sample, but it's pretty tough to have a 17% VPIP. Uh, just limping behind here. Uh, this hand obviously plays pretty terribly against uh, a limp raise. But we get the cooler anyway. <laughs> it's not really a cooler. Um, not going to be going too crazy here with bomb set. The 1 BB. We could res fold. I mean. With zero backdoors. And obviously a limp pot, like there's really not much that he's doing this with. Ace, five, four, six. I mean, we're not even doing great against that hand, um, so. Probably pretty marginal, but given that the button is super tight, I think we often get to play this in position. Uh, oh, I guess the $54 did start. Not a huge fan of the bounty tournaments, to be honest. So maybe we'll just hold off, given that we have uh, two tables and it's a nice format. Enough time to talk through stuff as well. The best turn, obviously checking back with some decent equity and, and backdoors. I think on this turn, uh, we're fine just folding. Uh, with what software can we explore all in option in Omaha? Um, I mean, you can just use solvers. Um, I mean, it, yeah, I mean, it takes a lot of compute power depending on whether you're looking at preflop. Um, or what uh, but and and here we are actually gonna call a little bit different here uh, being 40 big blinds deep um, mm, and I actually just might shove because we're never folding so we do have the pair and open ender we're kind of ahead against bare aces And we do flip, because he has the king. Queen jack seven or 10, and we get the baby. Nice pot, nice pot. Um, yeah, so you can just use like Monker Solver um, and just change, um, change the game and change the bet sizings uh, available that you build into your tree. Uh, so I have started playing around with that, but it's gonna take a lot more work and a lot more uh, thinking before I figure it out. I mean, I'm sure people are doing this stuff a lot, but there's just, there's no content out there on it to just kind of skip through. Uh, or none that I've found anyway. If people know of content, I'm always looking for uh, <clears throat> content from smart people that are kind of thinking through different game types and strategies. So let me know. LPD, what is up? Welcome to the chat. Went on a crazy swing this week. Plus 600 EV and lost about 450. Decided it's time to take a few days off and then sign up to the mastermind. We'll use your link. 
Good to hear, my man. That is uh, what we were just talking about with a with a downswing from uh, someone else. Similar to your situation when you're running bad. Best way to combat it is to study as much as possible and give yourself a break. Um, but yeah, when you uh, when you sign up with that link, um, just like shoot me a shoot me a message on Discord or. Uh, email so i know that the timing of that sign up is yours they have this like weird thing where it doesn't tell me who actually <laughs> did it um and then we'll figure out what works best for you in terms of uh helping you get the best out of the solver or the trainer i should say uh thinking player he could also have a, just a wrap right um Oh, yeah, I know what hand you're talking about now. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so pretty good flop. Um, so given that we have the six to and a backed off flush draw, more inclined to check. Pretty good turn. Uh, we do block diamonds as well. I mean, we block straight draws. And just going for a small bet, looking for like a hero call with like queens or something. I think we were very much struggling to get value there, but still a nice pot to take down anyway. Um, yeah, exactly. So when you're thinking about equity versus versus range and, you know, you said that he raises the, with a the wrap how much of the time, which like, we're not even like really ahead of um so like best case scenario like 30 percent of the time we're drawing dead to two outs 70 percent of the well 70 percent of the time we're drawing dead to two outs um sorry no <laughs> like 50 percent of the time we're probably drawing to board pairs so like whatever 20 something percent equity um depending on what he has if he has any pairs, you know, 25% of the time you might have a rat, which, you know, maybe we're flipping against. And then 25% of the time, you know, we're like dead to like two outs. It's not, it's not a great situation to be in, um, especially at um, like a low SPR. Um, actually, he just jammed, right? Yeah, he just jammed, I think. Sorry, it's always hard when like we're talking about a hand like five minutes later to like remember what what exactly went down because usually played like a couple of hands since then. to defend pretty wide but this would be quite wide and it is 50 bigs deep it's probably still a call to be honest
probably against the big stack probably just check folding uh which seems I mean, it's half pot though we do block the limp raising range here so i'm gonna go ahead and raise And probably want to bet, honestly, on the left. Could just bet fold. And really don't need too much protection with our blockers. And I think probably save the value bet for the river. If we get bet into here, probably losing a lot. Um, I think we do have to go for value. Um, I guess just check calling on the right. We do unblock spades. I don't think he's obviously we block aces and kings. Let me do take it down. This might actually be a call in Solver World. Against 3x. It's just a tough hand to play a post flop out of position. But I think that's what I was like quite surprised about. Was how much more. I mean obviously I need to get used to it compared to cash games with Rick, but in terms of the cold calling with like the, the Broadway pairs, um, it's it's pretty favorable from a solver perspective. Yeah, but just the bad 10 high. <clears throat> and we just let it go. We're not going to be able to value our hand if we make it. And obviously if the reverse implies as well if we do. And obviously we can get check ripped on as well. For effectively 5x pot <laughs> just kind of fun gotta love it gotta love it you get some pretty nice kings Should probably be dropping down <clears throat> to two and a half x on this left table now given that the average stack is um kind of wide uh kind of uh 75 ish so 100 bb and we obviously get squeezed it's not fun can't fold this hand unless this guy shoves Mm -hmm. 
I mean, well, I guess we could be out. <laughs> you should have no leads on this board. And I will actually just check it back. Um, it's going to be really hard to get value from anything. Um, weaker, obviously, you can have some flushes here, but most of them will be nut suited. I mean, we block the straights. Can have two pairs and stuff now. But obviously we have aces drawing dead. Pick up a nice pot. Always nice when you flop a flush. Makes the game somewhat easy. I mean, it could be the nut flush. You know, it wasn't that ideal, but we'll uh, we'll make do. He's ten five five. Um, this guy V pips, but raises a lot. So, and we block Ace Ace. So I think I do want to actually play this pot. Maybe it's too big of a sizing to cold call here with what is a pretty weak hand, but. I think we have some favorable players to play against. Um, and we can go broke if we run into uh, a big hand. Not getting away from this at SPR 3, obviously. Up nicely on the left as well. Actually, I'm gonna size up against uh, these particular players. Um, and then checking on the left, I guess, running out of time. Pretty bad turn. We do block aces. Will he have some straight draws? Maybe. Four six gets there, but obviously we're just shoving for value here. And we river the second nuts on the left. And we'll go for the small sizing, given that a lot of our nut flush draws uh, we'll raise the flop, so we're a little bit more capped. Uh, can't get caught by a straight here. And we do. So a nice pot on the right, and pretty decent one on the left too. Three, we're all in on the right. Just flops the nizzles. <laughs> Ace or Jack. Um, didn't realize this guy was so short. Um, He should just be jamming overpass. I don't think it's that bad that we block nut clubs. And just the quaddies. Just the quaddies. So another nice pot on the left. Making some moves, making some moves. I 
think with the nut suits is probably a call with the antis involved. Having the lower end and a pair in my hand and no club, I think I will check this back. Could honestly check again, given that we do have short on value in the nines. Obviously not folding. <clears throat> we unfortunately only have the royal flush out given that we black our run outs. Basically, always have the best hand now. Question is, what do we get called by when everything bricks? You probably call Queen X for this size. Without a pair blocker, this is pretty thin. And I probably will actually fold this to a res. Okay, okay, so we are going on a break. Let's check out the 20 BB hand. King eight seven four. So, yeah, I mean, you can see. That's like a 600 M chip value difference. So, you know, it's not great to fold. Um, actually, we can look it up this way as well. Just so you guys know <clears throat> what, uh, how the deal is with like PLO Mastermind, if you want to check hands. So they have a ton of sims. Um, sorry, the screen's like half cut off, but we'll figure it out. Uh, so if we wanted to look at MTTs with antis, you know, they have a bunch of stuff here. Uh, so like 20 big blind, two and a half X. So we button open, R is in a fold. Like we're never, we're basically never folding, right? But, um like these ranges are very very different to how people actually play so i mean we can look at the hand itself and obviously it's we we can tell by our range that we're never going to fold it um so king eight seven four uh double suited and so obviously losing but we want to know you know it's almost a it's almost a big blind. Um, 
in terms of it being better than folding or that might even be against a three bet to be honest uh, no so it's it's against the against the fold is like minus a big blind so it's probably not even a fold against the ranges that these guys have um based on the equity that we have against uh aces and kings but it's going to be a lot closer than this and that's kind of why i decided to fold because like let's say that this is like a much closer spot with their ranges and it's like you're you're making quarter of a big blind or something here um in a 12 13 big blind pot and we're just completely leaving it down to um chance taking away all edge there's going to be spots where i can get into where this number is like positive four bb right and a much 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 bigger edge um than than in this specific spot and i don't want to take those risks necessarily for like quarter of my stack um in a tournament in a cash game obviously never ever folding even 20 bbd we're never folding but so that was kind of the logic um <laughs> yeah i actually don't think that i uh looked at his hand i just saw that like I didn't see what he had. I just knew that obviously, like when he called, like we're, we're obviously good. We just needed the call. So I didn't actually look at his hand. He had ace, queen, jack, four. And on three, five king, I mean, hey, look, he's got that gut shot. He's got back doors. Like that's a monster. Um, during my little downswing, I ran top board into quads against the same opponent three times in one day. That is some fun shit yeah yeah that happened that happened to me the other day i think even on stream i think i ran into quads like three times in in my tournament grind um rohit what is up my friend welcome to the chat welcome to the stream um we will be right back
What did we miss? Did we miss asses? Just try to take my pup out real quick. Obviously squeezing here on the on the right. Just a little tough if this guy jams. It's for half of our stack and basically people are nearly always only shoving aces or kings. Given that we have kings. And we block a 10 as well in terms of some of the high end rundowns. Probably should have, or could have raised smaller. Um, obviously just jamming plot. Snaps it off. And we hold, ship it. Nice start to the session back. Um, question is out of the blinds, you know, what do we need protection against? That would be a reason to bet S10 here. We block the high end straight draws that can come in heavily um, and, you know, we don't block the lower straight draws. You could bet for value. This guy's a bit sure I was going to call here on the small blind. And I think we just have a standard check down. I mean, this is very noteworthy that this player didn't bet this, uh, didn't bluff this hand at any point. I mean, when he gets to the river, I mean, I guess he thinks he has some showdown value, but he also has a fantastic and to bluff and even though it's a great price i'm just gonna fold here there's like so many so few flops that we like get to realize our equity uh, and so many uh, that have a ton of reverse implied i mean our second in chips over here in the 30 dollar buy-in
So it looks like we already made the guarantee in the 150. There's still a good amount of time left to lay a reg. The other days I've been playing this during the week, it was pretty close to uh, the end of lit reg slash an overlay. I mean, never got to an overlay, but... So it looks like we might have a little bigger prize pool. I would assume the same tomorrow, but... See how it goes. Uh, double suited nines, almost a hundred bigs deep. Definitely gonna be calling. <clears throat> Not really folding much. Um, against 2.5x, I mean, you literally have to defend like 90% of your range. I mean, we shouldn't be folding this hand. So, <clears throat> no reason to bet because, I mean, how many hands that are ahead of us bet this flop? Most like kings, queens, jacks, tens, just check back. Um, so, I think we often have the best hand here. And the question is, is he gonna bluff? Because I will be calling the river. Unless he just has quads. Which is obviously a possibility too. He just ships 100 big blinds in here. And we'll obviously be folding, but... I don't know that we can actually fold to this. Like, why wouldn't he bet king? Like, it's strange. I mean, it's basically quads. In my mind, I don't know. He could have, like, jacks, maybe? But yeah, did not make any sense. So it ends up being a surprisingly solid, uh, solid pot. I think trip suit would be fold. <clears throat> Just single suit, I would probably open that hand. I mean, I missed what happened over here. <clears throat> this was a single raise pot. And he just... He just 10x jammed the pot. Or I guess effectively 3x jammed. And the guy called him with... Overpair, no backdoors. Interesting. Very interesting. I mean, it's wild. Like, I... Just feels unfair sometimes when people just like four or five X jam the pot and just get like called off like and they're basically drawing dead. I'm just like, wow. Um Um, deep enough here where we're obviously not going to fold. Pretty, pretty spicy flop. The 
thing is in position here. I'm probably just going to call a C-bet. If we do get it in here, an SPR of like six. Maybe a bit more. Um, we're not in great shape. There's so many like strong draws on this board. Um, shift our equity to the turn. Obviously never folding at this point. Um, and then just check calling down with the jacks. Um, so he should pick up a ton of equity on this card. So this might be a spot to just like over jam. I mean, when we run into Kings with hearts, it's, uh, it's unfortunate. But the pot is pretty sizable already. Wasn't really paying attention on the left. Probably should have had a small value band there. Is there any social media you post on when you go live? Um, I don't know. Like, do you guys not get... Some people have, like, said that to me, that they don't get, um, like, YouTube notifications. Maybe... Maybe I should. Uh, yeah. I'll be honest with you. I, uh... I don't really focus on it that much. Um... I do have an Instagram that I don't really use, that I should probably use more. Um... So I guess I could post on that. But yeah, I don't know why the YouTube notification system doesn't work very well. Because you should just be able to sign up to that and just get uh, notified anytime I go live. I may start a Discord group, a Discord server. Seems like a lot of work though, <laughs> but I think it could be quite cool. I mean, maybe I'll like put up like a, a survey or something, seeing how many people are interested. But you know, if you would be interested in like a Discord server whereby, you know, we can kind of chat about hands, you know, notify you guys when I'm going live, like what kind of events I'm playing and stuff. If there's interest in that, I'm definitely fine with it. Pair gut shot nut flush draw. Um not blocking the straight though. Kind of want to check back. Just boom. Shoot the nizzles. And probably just gonna bet small here. With the pair blocker, don't need too much protection. Nice turn on the right. I think with his stack size, he probably bets a lot of straight draws on the flop. So I think we're in very good shape. Um, he will check back some aces when he has them. Um, I think I'm blocking the king and the jack. We have to uh, go for this. Oh, I didn't see the uh, second part. How is the pup all recovered? I hope. Hey, I appreciate that LPD. Um, this is uh, TMI, but got really excited this morning because he had a solid poop. <laughs> and it's the first solid poop he's had in, I want to say, like, almost two weeks. Um, so, yeah. I was very excited. I never thought I'd ever be excited, as excited about poop as I was today in my entire life, but I was pretty excited. So he seems to be doing better. He's asleep, chilling by my feet right now. So um, yeah, I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you asking. Um, just kind of <laughs> not paying attention. Uh, the sizing makes no sense on this board. Um, 
I'm probably going to get myself raised a ton here. Um, check calling is probably better. Um, cause now we just get into this like gross spot. Um, and I think blocking some of the high end draws. Yeah. I mean, I'm actually just going to fold since I just like kind of botched this hand already. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to lose a massive stack and then just be like, Oh, I wasn't paying attention. So. Um, yeah, you know what, LPD, I'm, I'm going to check that out. Um, I'm going to check that out and see, like, with my own personal, uh, like, YouTube account, see if that gets notifications, but I don't know. So I'm going to just be checking back this bottom two. <clears throat> um, we have some straight draw blockers um, and, you know, just terrible equity on most turns. Except for that one. So we'll actually raise... Maybe raise folds, but I would have probably raised had he led. Um, I just think that we get him to continue with uh, too many draws here with two flush draws not blocking either. I think we want to lead. Hey, appreciate that DNY. Thank you for the good luck and also trying to help us out with the notification problem because uh, I am not the most uh, social media savvy person. So uh, I will lean on you guys to, to help me with that. Mm, on this river, I think I want to just pop fold. Um, he can obviously have flushes that complete. And he's likely not going to pull the flush. Do I think I get bluff res here much? Not really. So I think pot sizing is the way to go. And then <clears throat> check folding on the left. Um, this could actually make sense to lead. Do we have too much equity though with the parent gut shot? And I kind of backed off our shot on good bluff catcher. We block a ton of the board, but I think maybe we have too much equity to bet fold. So I am actually going to check this back. We turn some additional outs. Again, I don't think any need to bluff. Obviously, if we didn't have a jack, if I had like 9987, then yeah, I'd be definitely playing this hand more aggressively. We river the nut straight with a flush blocker. I think we have to call any reasonable bet on the river. And probably bet small for value. Against lower straights. 
But he is out with a small blind here. He shouldn't have too many, like, 5-6. And he does value bet the lowest, right? Yeah, so these are kind of the surprising hands to me that start becoming raises in this anti-structure with a with a smaller raise size as well. Um, if you look at like aces, kings, queens, jacks, um, I think there's like a 4% fold frequency with those hands. You can make an argument um, to kind of raise more of them with people's tight three bang ranges. Because you'll often get to see a flop. As I'm saying that, this guy's tanking for the squeeze. But he does not. Um, so obviously very good board for our range i think i might check call this though uh, actually I, I need some more time i think the lead is better because when we get raised um you know it's actually not as bad of a fold as it seems given that we only have like basically one nutted out um definitely gonna lead this turn and I think for a large sizing. We heavily block the raising range. And when we do get raised, especially on the turn, I think it's just extremely credible in position. <laughs> and we do get raised, so just going to fold. No one else calls, I'll defend this hand, but three way, probably not going to. The short stack and probably a pretty low SPR for the hand that we're just gonna <clears throat> be kind of struggling. I say that now I wanna call, but I'm just gonna fold. Probably supposed to defend this, to be honest. Especially with a low 3 bet range. But we can't all play. Flop turn and river are like a solver, so you just increase the chances that you're gonna make mistakes with uh with hands like that. I wonder what the EV is, whether it's marginal or not. We do get squeezed. And it's just very likely that if we call and this guy calls, this guy's going to ship. Then we have to overcall. It's a pretty gross spot with two people behind. <clears throat> Cash game obviously never folding. And was just trying to get the raise off in time. Once we min raise and get three bet though at these stack depths, I think we have a zero percent full frequency. Pretty bad flop for my hand. Pretty good flop for my range though. 
Um, expect to get check jammed on by overpass and clubs. Pretty out of line to bet here, to be honest. But we do block overpass and clubs slightly with the ace. He has like bad kings here. Pretty tough to call. Um, I don't want to get like into marginal spots necessarily with like kind of. I know there's a rebuy, but I imagine that it's probably not great. Um, Yeah, the rebuy is 30 BB, so it's not free tournament life. Obviously, you can buy back in, but I don't really want to be messing around with like a big stack with uh, marginal hands out of position, especially when we're still relatively deep. These types of hands, I mean, you could actually three bet this, given that people basically four bet aces and kings. Pretty good flop. Um, we're very shallow, so I think I am just going to check here. Um, with our particular hand, we make it really likely that this guy does have um, an overpair in terms of aces or kings. Um, pretty good turn card for his aces and kings. Um, we don't block many of the straight draws, though, unfortunately. Bad river card for us to get value. Mm. And here, obviously, bang and stacking off. <clears throat> With a back top flush draw, like just gonna bet small. And then I think just jamming turn. I get caught by like straight drawing clubs, which were crushing. Could argue to use <clears throat> a small size again, given that we have his range being so wide on the flop with a small bet size, but. If this guy shoves, we probably want to re ISO, I guess. Uh, do we want a three bet here? We should. But again, I'm. Uh... <laughs> I'm starting to play a lot lower variance lines. I mean, I think we have a good edge against this guy post flop. And then just check calling flop. Seeing what he does on turns. He'll check back some two pair on the flop, I guess. I mean, I've seen him bluff. I'm just kind of going to check here. I mean, we don't have as many outs to boards if we get, um, like, rip, ripped on the turn. And even with our hand, if we get called, there is not that many rippers that we're going to be able to value bet. Um, so pretty good card. A lot of draws miss on the turn. And we unblock a lot of them, so I think just check calling here. He doesn't go for it this time. Oh, what? 
Wow. He is, uh, <laughs> he is scared of me. He really thinks I'm super trappy. No value bet there with Ace King. This might be a little loose, actually, with the 20 BB stack. We could even probably min res this one. In fact, I will min res <clears throat> with two shorties in the blinds. Guess there's some flops we can fold. Not this one. I mean, we only need 25% equity. We have 70% equity somehow on this board. Ace or queen. Doesn't look like it. Just the nuts. Just the nuts. All right, chip leader, chip leader, ship it. Alright, well, we're all in on the right. We turn a wrap as well as our flush draw. Decided to lead there. I mean, there are some people that will check back aces even at that um, top stack depth. We are running pretty hot right now, people. Um, I 
I do expect him to bet this turn a decent amount. We could check res, but we don't really have backup, so I don't mind just going for the lead. Are we about to get ripped on with the redraw? No. And we get the ultimate blank. <sighs> so, hands that he would check back. Like, Ace King is definitely in the range. Um, sure, some missed flush draws, but I think a lot of those flush draws with King X bet. I think we just want to go ahead and bet here and hope to get called by, like, Ace King Queen. We do not. Mm. Might even be a defend without the nut suit. Yeah, definitely need some work on the small blind calling range, call calling range. <laughs> yeah, LPD, those, uh, those bounty tournaments do jack up the variance and, and why you see it as well um, for those massive overbets on the on the flop. Um, you know, obviously those happen when you're deep and deep is at the beginning of the tournament and the value in terms of like chip EV of the bounties at the beginning of a tournament is like significantly more than it is um, uh, compared to when the tournament gets deeper because then the value of the actual prize pool power structure becomes more attainable and where chips are actually a bit more valuable than the bounty itself. But like if you jam it in, you know, pre-flop with a bounty on someone's head, um, you know, like it's tough for it to be like minus EV, um, like if you have any sort of decent equity uh, in the early stages. Because just building stacks in those tournaments regardless of just taking down the bounty itself is like so valuable like half of the prize structure is within knocking people out and uh you know you can only do that if you cover people so if you get to the like middle stages of the tournament with like a monster stack um your like overall ev or like total prizes in the tournament is just so much bigger and so it like makes sense to play super aggressively at the beginning but not to the extent where people are making these like crazy negative EV plays where they just like over jam like gut shots and things like that. Um, so, I mean, that's why I don't tend to play them as much. I think I like this structure better. Yeah, I appreciate that. Hopefully, hopefully we make a final table today. That would be... Uh... That would be nice. We don't punt it off on the final table bubble. Like a mega fish. Bottom pair, two backdoor flush draws, not gut shot. Gonna have to peel here. And I'm guessing turn the jack of clubs, probably. Um, definitely gonna check back. You'll have a ton of check raises on this board, even though he should be betting uh, a much higher frequency than what he probably thinks. So. Uh, 
And now we do have to call with the turn two pair. I just don't think that he has many one pair hands that he's turning into a bluff. So we probably need to hit um, against his like ace x two pair. We could obviously be drawing very thin against the set too. Uh, he should be checking this river a good amount though. Hopefully we get a free showdown and then obviously folding to any bet. He does have the two pair. That is in pretty rough shape. Very tight player, I think here you can go for small bet, large bet on certain turns like this one. He'll raise more nut flushes uh, on this flop that isn't as connected because one, they'll have backup with straight draws, and two, it's not really a scary board. Um, so I think we got three straights here on no clubs. And this is a situation where we probably should raise, but given that we don't block the limp raising range and how um, how much people kind of put aces into that range, um, I think it makes more sense to just check back. Um, Such a bad, bad turn. <laughs> um, he's gonna have a ton of nut flush draws given our hand. He's also gonna have aces. Um, he's not gonna fold ace X of diamonds, obviously. It's a pretty bad turn. Um, I think jamming makes sense. Because I don't know what else we're going to get value from with a small sizing, like Ace X, I don't know. Seems like it's tough to have that in his range. Should have just ISOed with this hand. Wasn't uh, really paying attention. And then I guess we do fold. We're getting three to one though. 
This is like. First, I was against Overpass, and he has one of our tens. So gross. So gross. It's <laughs> so gross. Um, we flop a pair and then a flush draw in a multi way pot. Uh, I'm actually going to check this. Would be unfortunate to get raised. But you could argue that people are um, only check raising value, so. Um, you're going to get check raised way less than you should. Um, don't love the run out. Don't think we can bluff. Guess we could check res. That's the only line that is going to be believable at this point. Or we could just ship it with third pair. ship a little heads up spot on the left but I think against this player I am actually going to call uh, I just don't know that there's value I mean this type of player I have him labeled as a calling station will call with like kings but he'll also just check those down And probably just gonna block that river at this point. I mean, see if we get called by a queen. That's wild. I would have expected him to bet that at some point. We do block the limberizing ranch here, but I think just being able to play this pot. In position without getting raised off it is fine too. I guess with the gut shot, maybe we check it back. If I didn't, this hand is like kind of a bit weak. Don't mind cleaning off some equity. <laughs> yeah, Jack Jack 10 10 rip. Pretty good turn. 
It just makes his hand very likely to have a draw at this point. And when I bet into four people, he's going to basically think I have a boat or he's going to overbet the pot. I mean, he surely can't be bet folding here, right? I mean, uh, do we run into S-Jack? I feel like he just rips S-Jack on the flop now. No king, no eight. Ship it. Another nice pot on the right. And we will be back soon.
guess not ideal. <laughs> um, I honestly think we just fold. Oh, we have a very, very tough time improving. We have a lot of blockers, but the SPR is going to be really low. And, you know, it's going to be hard to make people fold any flushes or straights. You know, obviously, the dream turn, but it's what it is. Um, Check two on this board. We don't really have much hope for this hand. Um... I imagine we might get check raised a good amount. But we're obviously not really folding any equity. Turn some equity. I mean, I don't know what he can have that doesn't bet. LPD, I always appreciate the uh, positive attitude. I think this guy is like king's fall, to be honest. In terms of hands, that makes sense. We obviously have no aces, so it makes no sense to raise. Just let him have it. OPD, you were pretty, you were pretty close last time. If I, uh, we didn't punt it off, you, you would have been right. Long way to go, long way to go, but we can dream, right? what these MTTs are all about. this with kind of live outs it's never folding a king um like we can be good on a card like this we do block some of the some of the folds like queens and tens so i think we probably just take this to showdown um i imagine that we lose to like jacks something like that a decent amount of the time Doesn't he bet a king on the turn after we check back? Any value bets, Jax? Oh, so gross. What are you doing, dude? Tricking the shit out of me is what he's doing. I did say that we lose to Jax a lot, but I did not specify that I'd pay them off on the river. I'm glad I missed that part then LPD. Um, obvious call here with just the super nuts. And whiffing the board hard. Um, at this SPR, he's never folding an overpair. Um, we don't have that many deuces in our EP. Raising range, so I mean, like, he can basically jam this flop pretty re relentlessly. He might even slow play some overpairs. Try and uh, let us catch up for quarter pot. I mean, we just block like the the hands that aren't aces or kings heavily when their ranges are so skewed. So even with an eight, I'm gonna fold <clears throat> top set with a straight blocker. Um, obviously, 
Going for the bet here. And I think we want to just continue to go for value. Interesting flop on the right as well. He'll have like plenty of like pair plus gut shot type hands that aren't going to fold. I'm gonna check this one back though without a straight blocker. And then obviously calling turn. And he just rips. You let me know if you guys run into any bluffs there in tournaments. And we can maybe make some calls, but I don't know. Uh, I don't really see it. Very low SPR. Contract call. Could back raise his hand. Uh, snap folding. Does he not just rip flush draws on the flop? I think we just bet fold. And folding on the right. Could definitely continue here. I think the solve would probably continue. Folding on the right. Uh, 15 BB deep against this guy. Do we want to build a pot? Probably not without the Nutsu, but definitely not folding. have one of the best hands <clears throat> that doesn't have value to bet but we're not gonna get the chance it look like unless we want to just rip it it'd be pretty sick but there's too many draws out there that the fold equity just isn't there And um, obviously no backup with the nut flush draw here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and check call. Would be not a fun spot to get raised, especially at this SPR. And he'll be able to jam a lot more, like bear two pairs. That's pretty large on the flop, which isn't great, but not folding. Ton of straights get there. Very good card for my 
Check calling range. Hmm. I just don't think he's folding like two pads and sets at this point if I go big. Um, on the left, check back flop, easy, check call, turn, uh, call turn. And the board pairs on the river. Not great, given how the action went. And just folding on the left, I guess. Like he can bet flush draws for this size. Did have two pair. Without a heart, probably gonna check back. Um, back off the straw and then obviously don't need that much protection because kind of most high cards give us um, it's a pretty good draw. Not <laughs> not the offsuit six though. Um, this guy seems to be playing like pretty straightforward, but he has had some decent check raises in his range. I guess we can bet and just bet full. Like, I don't think that he's like really check raise bluffing. Um, and then with a jack kicker, I think just check back. Club blocker into the calling station, probably not the best idea. <laughs> um, as I said, not bluffing this guy ever. Can we win with nine high? Like he likely has ASX, but he's just not gonna fold, I don't think. Or slow playing some tricky shit. Jax. Love it. Love the turn call. I appreciate that. KRZ. I'm not sure how to say that. Crazy. Crazy season. I don't know. Maybe I'm just <clears throat> not getting it, but um, I appreciate it. Those folds are never fun in uh, tournaments. And you can obviously justify them a bit more in cash games, just ripping it and, you know. But I haven't been showing too many bluffs in those spots yet, so. I'm still uh, still gonna go with the overfolding strategy even more than in cash games.
so tempting to limp this hand. <clears throat> we do have an S and we block like the ISO ranges. Just maybe not from this guy. I mean, this is absolute trash, but. We basically have 17 BB if we hit our hand. Unfortunately not. Hold! Hold for Ronald Reagan! No! Pedaboard! No! Bluffing on the right with... Uh... A hand that very happy to bet for, but obviously has some equity against an eight if we do get called. Ooh, three bets on the left, pulled in with the queens. This was a bounty tournament. Oh, he doesn't call anywhere. Um, yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it, DMY. We will, we will do our best. We will certainly do our best. Uh, I mean, we just kind of get crushed a lot. Like, if I had a middling run down here, yeah. It's actually very tight, but. And we were doing okay. Doing very well. Tripping the nuts. Ronald Reagan all in again. And he double up again. Just one time. Where's my just one time? Hit him! Hit him! Unfortunately not. We say goodbye to our friend. Snap check. Um, I mean, you should likely have some leads on this board. So I think we have to increase our check back frequency, given that he has more strong hands than he should after checking. Um, good turn for our range. Um, um, yeah, I mean, we never get bad to fold. I don't think there's any point in bang here. Don't need protection against too much. Like, you can have some straight draws, sure, but... Jack? <laughs> In 
Interesting, interesting. I remember that we've uh, chipped down a decent amount here on the left. Only sat with uh, 30 bigs. As I think there must have just been a level jump. down for a little bit. Sorry, just trying to fix my mic. Tough to win this end if we check back, but just like zero blockers to continuing wrench. Pretty good turn out of all of the turns out there. Could opt to raise the turn not having a club. I'm actually going to check back um, without a club. I think there's too many continues. Um, and he could still have some King X. It's a pretty good river. Unfortunately, with our pair blocker, we don't get to raise. Um, so we'll just be value bang. And crying when he raises. Yikes. Well, that worked out well. We did not have to pay the check raise, which would have been, well, I was gonna say a lot harder to call, but we just wouldn't have called. So still sticking with a 2.5x, <clears throat> I think probably sub 20, 20 big blinds, like 10 to 15-ish range, 
I will start. Um, I'll start power opening, given that obviously stealing the blinds is much more valuable. Here against a squeeze, kind of gross, but uh, against the call with that flop, we're not complaining. It's just so hard to find continues here. And we still don't find any on the turn, but <clears throat> it's a decent pop for our stack size. Man, we just keep getting sucked in. We have four outs to the nuts, right? Well, I guess three. Sad times. Sad times. It's hard to believe that I have a bluffing range here, um, and obviously very good board for me. On the pairing turn... Just, we're just bluffing our stack off at this point. Uh, I mean, it always feels like a punt when it doesn't work, but definitely giving up with 4x now. We literally beat nothing. Expect a jam here. Uh, I don't think we can fold 10s on the right. Some backed off straight draws as well. I don't think there's many 8x combinations that he bets. Um, Kings, he's doubling on the turn pretty much always. I think we have a check call here. And then obviously shipping it on the left. Oh, he rivers the eight. He does bet the eight on the flop. Gets rewarded. We call it off, probably run into kings. No, we do not. Hold him, hold him.
ship it. Nice little pot to get us back on track after uh, a <laughs> couple, uh, couple barrels of bluffs. Always nice to get it back fast. So you have to call off here against uh, Entropy Bender. And man, it's pretty high variance to squeeze. This guy's been playing super tight. Yeah. Let's go low variance, guys. No rewards, unfortunately. Jack, Jack. He, he he does the opposite of Jack. That is very much the opposite of Jack. Um, bottom two pair. No, sorry. Yeah. Bottom two pair. No backup. Uh, pretty standard check back. Probably have to call a turn with the King of Spades in order to bet some rivers. Pretty bad river. We lose to a lot of things now, including Ace Queen. She can probably value bet, so my blockers are not that fantastic. And yeah, I mean, it feels. He has so many two pairs here. Like, not even worried about the strats, but. Okay, okay, okay. a little loose at 30 bigs maybe if it's queen high suit Ugh. guess we have to call let me open this I mean, ship it. It's probably just a bad open. So he has aces full, which is fun. <laughs> LPD always believe in until we uh, until we call the three bet over here. Now we're uh, we're back down. Uh, checking back on the right with sometimes we can bluff. It's a little tricky here to start turning our hand into a bluff. We have some showdown value, and if we bet and get called and gem a blank river, two pairs are going to be quite inclined to call. Um, and anything with like good draws here is not folding to a bet, so we don't get too much protection. It's a pretty clean river. Okay, okay.
well pretty well on the left won't be behind much and on the right i think checking back with a decent bluff catcher Hmm, don't mind bang now. Or actually, I think checking back's fine. I guess we bet with no shot on value. I mean, we're not folding, so. And we turn some more equity. So I think just shipping at this point. It's going to make the most sense. And I mean. Um, I feel like this is too connected to not open under the gun. Maybe I'm wrong there. Gives him the bye bye after being absolutely crushed pre flop. I think we do have to peel one on left with the open ender and uh, back to flush draw. Like when we call SPR a little over one on the turn, there are some turns we can just jam. That's an unfortunate one. Could jam against this size. This is just often a cheap bluff of betting one third on the turn. Ah, oh, man, this is gross. It's gross. It's gross. I think. I think probably given ICM, we have to fold. I mean, we're still. It's like seven away from the money, I guess, but. Um, with the back door, I, uh, I'm actually going to check this back. A little conservative. And large bet. No other outs. Actually, just gonna fold. Sick fold, sick fold.
Uh, tough one on the right. I mean, how much ace queen, queen nine? I guess he has a good amount of queen nine. Um, I don't love it. We do obviously have the jack of diamonds blocker, but uh, what what hands does he have that he leads? And barrels, um, yeah, maybe like King 10 would maybe call. Tough board to connect with, and uh, you know, obviously hits my range pretty well. He's going to be calling super wide. He can obviously just jam here with some good ICM pressure, um, but obviously a little risky. Um, I think probably we want to raise this. If we skew people's three bet ranges to aces and kings, just the chances of getting three bet here is very low. And pretty rough flop. <clears throat> For such a pretty hand pre flop. SPR under three. Um, guess we have to check call. Problem is this guy is such a big stack that it's gonna be like really hard to call three straights. So like, do we just do we just give up now? Which sounds crazy, but could actually min res. Actually, res fold. And one of the worst turns in the deck. Uh, and a marginal hand over here on the right. We get dunked into. I mean, this is just the problem with playing out of position against the big stack. Like, he can basically just do anything. And it's so hard to defend against. Uh, checking back on the right. Don't need much protection against anything with our... Uh, Blockers. Uh, I guess six, seven gets there. We don't block it. Probably just a fold. And we are officially the short stack in the 150. But pretty close to the bubble in the uh, $30 tournament. Obviously wish that was the other way around, but it is what it is. Could be the hand on the left. We 
we'll take the blinds. Mm. Oof, I don't know about that. I do not know about that. Ace three, deuce, deuce. Whoa, cancel, what? Ah, oh, man, we're, we're getting a lot shorter over here. We need to, uh, we need to chill out. I mean, Ace-3, Deuce-Deuce Deuce does have, you know, very good blockers against the three-bet range, but... I wonder what the solver would do there. I need to work on my ranges some more for sure. I'm gonna guess that it probably falls because you offset the uh, like a high card strength high pairs are obviously key when you start getting the short and uh, you know <laughs> three three deuce. Having the ace is not as as valuable because people are gonna ISO you with you know kings queens jacks maybe not jacks depending how connected they are so. Probably just a fault. This seems like a very big pot to lose with an over pair and a pair blocker. Let's see what happened there. So raise, flat, squeeze. Oh, I guess it's SPR less than one on the flop, so. And we get three bet. Fantastic. Wasn't paying attention on the right, thought that we actually uh, raised preflop. Not a good card to uh, lay down. Dusting off big blinds left and right. I feel like it's gonna be uh, <clears throat> funny timing, like one of those uh, TV shows that has the dramatic kind of pause. Like we're about to go on break and about to be in the bubble at each table. So uh, stay tuned until after whatever.
All right, we will be back. We will be back.
All right, let's do it. I'm ready. Not the, not the show is stack in the 150 anymore at least guys how much is a cash web 17 reason to bet i'm gonna play very passively in general but we don't really need too much protection probably have the best hand maybe not anymore feels like we should call We shipping queens at 10 figs. I guess we probably are. I guess we probably are. Here we go. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Probably not with ICM. I don't know, but how we're that far away and that shot stacked. I mean, <laughs> <Whee! laughs> oh man, oh boy. See, now we actually, I guess we have to be careful here. Like we could just limp the button, if that's a thing. I mean, guys. <laughs> Blocking the king here as well. Obviously we block his two pairs um, that we unblock with this ace, king, king type hand. Um, but when we don't have the king of clubs, when we have the king of clubs, he's got like less bluffs in his range. And so no sense in raising here, right? Because he's clearly bluffing. Um, and just is going to apply a ton of ICM pressure. So I think just flatting and praying that we don't get the board pair. Fuck! Not that we like necessarily lose here, but like... Like, not that we lose here, but like... Now we just get no value from his bluffs. That sucks. I mean, it doesn't suck. We just had like a fantastic run, but uh...
Já foi meu mal, ok? LPD, you just, you bring the good vibes, man. You brought me those quads. I appreciate it. Oh, I did the bubble burst over here, too. I think it did. Hmm. Not enough interaction to really start bluffing here. It's just such a coordinated board that people can continue on. And then just folding turn. I'll bluff a non-spared six. How about that? Just folding this so I can actually get a drink. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, that gave me a good chuckle out there. I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I would let him. I would definitely let the pup play the final table if we made one. Um, just have to set up some hotkeys. I've never played with hotkeys actually, so would be interesting. I'm sure he'd be pretty aggro. Oh no. Oh no. Do we fold this? On the bubble? Do we fold this on the bubble? That's, that seems so weak. Maybe I'm now flipping to the complete opposite side of punting the other way where I just play like such a like a knit little pussy, but We'll see. Obviously calling on the right. Pretty, pretty bad turn. I 
I thought we had the ball on the river. Um, we lose to SX a ton here. Um, I think we have too much short on value though. And we could consider check ripping. Or like check min raising. Uh huh. Oh boy. Raise Tarantino. Feel more comfortable stacking up against him. I mean, I guess we ship this in. I mean, we're right on the bubble as well. Someone just busted. Yeah, you say that, Robin. Okay. And I was about to just ship it in with kings. <laughs> Whatever, I stand by my... I stand by my play last week. Let's play aggro. We're not here to min cash. We're looking for a, we're looking for a top three finish. No, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> that was uh, that was pretty hilarious though. I mean, but what about the guy that punted off against me? He had like eight high or something. <clears throat> Single suit.
Come on, Tarantino. Do it for the boys. Let's get a four-way, seven VB all in. Pretty hard for this board to hit the um, this board. Uh, obviously, we'll have like some ace four type hands. Uh, blocking a six and a heart is nice. And then obviously taking the free turn here with some equity. Oh my god! Come on, Kusmus, stack him. Question is, does he? F I mean, does he fold over pairs at this point? Nah, whatever. We check. He's definitely not folding that hand. So good job. We didn't have uh, time to convince ourselves to bluff there. I guess. Tarantino is holding out strong. He's just refusing to play a hand. <laughs> yeah, LPD. We <clears throat> we uh, we would much prefer that absolute punter sat to our right. Unfortunately, we have the chip leader to our right, and then on this table we have um, a big uh, a big tournament reg. Still no cash. Oof. I was gonna say, against Tarantino, probably would have to have stacked off. And I think I'm just gonna fold. This is such a hard hand to play post flop. Maybe the solver's even folding this trip suited with the seven deuce. But likely not, given that. Even against pot size, we still have to call like 80% of our range. in the mix and we get the all in come on Kusmus oh no oh no oh no hold hold hey ship it ship it
All right, cashed, baby, cashed. on the flop with just you know people's overfull tendencies and obviously some set blockers as well and then equity against sets um unfortunately he's just gonna have like a six eye flush or something and he's just like never gonna fold i guess like ace nine but not uh not gonna punt off here yeah six eye flush It's very nitty to not bet that on the river. But I guess pretty standard for uh, a lot of the players in this tournament. Man, that sucks. I was considering squeezing here with the S blocker and how people view tight uh, three bet ranges, but unfortunately, he's just always going to have too good of a price to call when we jam. Sad face. I mean, obviously this board, <clears throat> we're crushing against his range. Uh, depends if we want to just like fire it off multiple times. Obviously we have no deuce, but we have all of the nud pairs.
Oof. Have quads over nut bot over here. Yikes. Looks like we are shipping on the right as well. Uh, I guess we could limp rip this. It's like gonna be a weird SPR when we part and get called. I don't think people are aggressive enough against the limp. We probably don't get to do it as much as we would want. Somehow up to 10th on the left table. Maybe we should play a little more. Maybe this isn't even an open then. Must be a ton of like short or <clears throat> short middle stacks. I just have to give it up. I mean, there's just no fold equity, no room to make any moves, so. Very limited <clears throat> bluffs in that range. I expect him just to bluff this board relentlessly, especially given my own blockers to spades, <clears throat> and not much we can do. Ooh, so that's interesting. <clears throat> Probably a bad turn that gets us stacked when we run into a jack here. Obviously, can't really fold the turn. I mean, we could. <laughs> I mean, pair jump to 11th, like, isn't really that big. I mean, now we get stacked. Okay, okay, okay. Taking down a nice pot. Moving up on in the world. Up to eighth place, baby. Yeah, quads versus nutbot for tournament life. I mean, that is very gross. That is very, very, very gross. It was rivet was it rivet quads as well? Uh, I can't remember. It's too hard to go back on this thing. Acer seven, one time. Yeah, 
damn it. We do block a ton. Pretty good flop on the right, I think. This might be just a fold. How aggressive is this guy? Not aggressive. He blocks straight draws, I mean, it's like a good chance he has a four. Not really when he checks, unless he has 10 four, and then, you know, we get knocked out of the tournament. Not ideal blocking the ace in this situation. I'm honestly kind of scared at this point. <laughs> like, I actually might check back river. Definitely not raising. I mean, okay. <laughs> I mean, we will take it. We will take it. Big pot at this stage in the tawny. And obviously just flatting here with the queens. And check folding flop. With a club we could could potentially uh continue. I think after the check back, we definitely bet for some protection here against uh, straight draws that we don't fully block. I guess we bet call. It's a pretty bad river. I mean, every draw misses, but we block some of the draws. We will obviously call with 7x. We win, I guess. Sneaky, sneaky. I mean, <clears throat> I, I guess maybe this guy's not. I mean, I guess he had this guy behind. I wasn't really paying attention to that <clears throat> in terms of how many aces he has in his range when this guy has uh, like nine big blinds behind him. So it makes a lot more sense. But I still think we would have played it the same way anyway.
Yeah, pocket fives would have been gross in that situation. But luckily we're alive. Yeah, I mean, exactly. That's why that's why I almost raised the flop, right? Like a complete air ball from the non aggro player is like a blessing. Yeah, I mean, I, I looked at his stats and I was like, I should raise. I mean, we blocked some of the draws. <clears throat> we can cooler a four. And this guy just like randomly like with a mid stack like the tournament is just like, you know what? I'm going to become an aggro player. A limp call ascent. And pretty bad flop. I mean, there's like <clears throat> hardly a pair jump in this tournament on the right until like the final table, so. Doesn't, uh. Doesn't make too much sense to play in any. It's like much less uh, ICM pressure, I guess. gonna fold and might have called here against 2.5x but with this guy with 10 big blinds pretty tough to call behind even though we do block the uh the jamming range we will have to call us off against my life Um, I think check back and evaluate turns. Not having a single spade, especially with the uncovered ace on board, we can get jammed on a ton by hands that we're doing well against. So close to a dreamy turn. Obviously, we're not folding. We have outs against everything. So confusing. What is he talking about? Wants me to value bet? <clears throat> Do we ship it? Do we, do we ship it? I think probably. <sighs> That's unfortunate. We're into aces or kings. Kings with the ace as well. Very, very unfortunate. And that is us out. Unless we get a miracle on the river. That is not it. And we are out, we are out. And on the right. I just check call flop.
Against the small size, yeah, I mean, I guess <clears throat> we're never folding. Feels like we're just getting like sucked in here by the straight and uh, and clubs. I mean, pretty good river. You should only really be banged up flush draws really on the turn. Hmm. Could value on ourselves here. That is a very, very interesting line. <clears throat> and we get pretty unlucky with the run out there. And drop down significantly. Uh, so I guess we can switch to one table. This one. Oh. What the hell? I know we had it. A likely short duration. Um. Our tournament life in this table. We're obviously all in. And that is a nice fold to see. We get the shove from my life, obviously. Shoving it in. Get it in crushed. Not crushed, but not in good shape. Can we hold? No queen, no ten. Oh, come on. Come on. It's a little, uh, little tilting. Obviously gonna call 1BB here on the right. And flop the dream. And I guess we just call. Then I guess just shove turn. We get the fault. I mean, it's on the bubble of a pair jump there on the other table with the ace queen queen, but I still. I don't know that we ever just get to like flat ace queen queen. Twenty big blinds deep. I gotta go back and gotta go back and look. Hmm, probably limping here against the big stack. He's gonna three bet pretty aggressively. And then a ton of blockers. Sorry, LPD. We're uh, we're gonna take down the uh, the thirty dollar big big comeback incoming here from nineteenth. I mean, realistically, we double up and we're like ahead of uh, ahead of the average stack. Yeah, I mean that. So that that tournament's an interesting one because they don't get that many runners, right? So, um, yeah. 
the the pair structure is like heavily weighted towards final table um yeah so is what it is Tempted to even fold this to a three bet, to be honest. Not against this guy's shove, because he can be a lot wider. Decent turn, likely with the king we have the nut overpass. Not great when he bets out. Um, don't think we can fold just yet. And I just don't see enough bluffs. Don't see enough bluffs. I mean, he can pot 8-9 uh, here. He can obviously have sets on this board. But like boards, so. No pair blocker, no nut straight blocker, I think. We just have to fold, unfortunately. And we are back down at the bottom. But we've come back before. We have come back before. <sighs> um, no, I'm not. I'm not going to pull up Russian cash. I'm just going to play this till this is done, and then that kind of be the the end of it. I mean, it's. <laughs> a four hour stream over four hour stream um maybe we'll come back later for some other tournaments but let's see what's going on Obviously shipping any flop basically is good enough. Go try over pair back to flush draw. Should get called by any pair. And there you have it, people. Can't really catch a break towards the end there, but obviously that is tournament life. All right, well, that is gonna be it from me uh, for today. And then I think tomorrow we'll probably play some more tables. Um, like maybe some of the bigger tournaments uh, on stream and uh, see if we can qualify for the uh, the bounty millions as well earlier in the day if i do obviously i'll stream that um but yeah thanks for uh tuning in guys as always appreciate the chat and the uh the entertainment while we uh, grind out these uh tournaments and uh good luck at the tables out there